My Lords, may I firstly congratulate Lord Boateng on giving us the opportunity to raise these issues concerning Cameroon, which are so important in our overall philosophy of the developments of Africa. My Lord, since independence in 1961, there followed a long period of economic migration <coughs> back and forth between Cameroon and Nigeria, together with asylum seekers seek, uh, fleeing from Boko Haram, perhaps inevitably in the war between Cameroon's, uh, Camer Cameroon's army and the Islamist militant group. But since 2015, Cameroon has forcibly removed, apparently, tens of thousands of asylum seekers back to northeast Nigeria, despite warnings that the region remains unsafe from Boko Haram attacks. And in March 2017, concerns about forced returns led Nigeria, Cameroon and the UNHCR to sign an agreement for the voluntary repatriation of Nigerian refugees living in Cameroon. The agreement states, my lords, that rep repatriation of Nigerian refugees will be done solely on the basis of their freely expressed will and will only be done when the conditions are favourable for the return of the refugees in safety and dignity to the place of their final destination in Nigeria. Yet in September 2017, Human Rights Watch reported that over 100,000 Nigerian refugees were deported from Cameroon in the hope of stemming the spread of Boko Haram, defying a plea from the UN Refugee Agency not to, to return anyone to northeast Nigeria where Boko Haram had killed thousands of people. Again, according to Human Rights Watch, the Cameroonian military torture and abuse of Nigerian refugees seems to be driven by an arbitrary decision to punish them for Boko Haram attacks in Cameroon and to discourage Nigerians from seeking asylum. It is still not safe to drive from Cameroon into places like the border towns of Pulka and Banki, say leaders of the Borneo Community Coalition, uh, who assist IDPs. This is the Borneo Community Coalition. The attacks on returnees should prove to Cameroon that forcing delegates back to, Ni back to Nigeria could lead them to their deaths. Last week, the fury created by reports that as many as 100 students had been kidnapped from a Presbyterian secondary school subsidized uh, subsided to a large degree when the true figure of some 11 was apparently confirmed on their release. Separatists fighting for independence of the two English-speaking regions condemned the kidnapping in Bermuda and accused the government of staging the incident. On the 5th of November, the Journal, uh, the Journal du Cameroun reported that the Committee to Protect Journalists, the CPJ, was exhorting the government to stop intimidating journalists in the country. Angela Quintal, the CPJ's Africa Programme Coordinator, said that over the last year, Cameroon journalists have been repeatedly summoned simply for doing their work. In many cases, these summonses resulted in detentions. This pattern of intimidation, she said, must end. Before the London Chogum, the CPA UK branch hosted a visit of a parliamentary delegation from Cameroon. The delegation was led by the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly of the Cameroon, the Honourable Emilia Monjoa Riaka. The tension between Anglophone and Francophone areas of Cameroon were discussed, particularly the disparity between the French and English legislative and legal systems operating in different parts of the country. The delegation stated that as a minority of the population, came from the English-speaking community. There was less demand for their, uh, for, and, their, and therefore less incentive to provide trained officials specialists in the English legal and legislative systems, leading to a shortage of these personnel. Well, the Honourable Amelia Monjoa Liaka later attended the opening of the plenary session of the London Chogum as the newly elected chair of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association's Interna International Referring to the Chogum ski themes of fairness, prosperity, security, and sustainable development, she said, and I quote, there can be no peace without fairness. 
There can be no meaningful development without peace. There can be no security without peace. And therefore, no nation can prosper without fairness, peace and security. Well, as the chair of the Commonwealth uh, All-Party Parliamentary Group, may I ask the Minister, uh, in her reply, if she can say what advice she might give to the chair of the CPA International on how her wise words might well be applied to her own Parliament as well as the Commonwealth at large. And with the Anglophone conflict edging towards civil war, will the Minister urge dialogue between the separatists, separatists and the Government of Cameroon as a means of halting escalation? And will she call for support for an Anglophone General Conference able to negotiate with the Government of the Cameroon, breaking their reliance on a military campaign to crush the rebels? And will the Minister finally also confirm that she will urge the Government of the Cameroon to reflect that as signatories to the Commonwealth Charter, they too are committed to helping to establish and apply human rights throughout the Commonwealth in accordance with the Latimer principles.